case, we're going to talk about the ifs function. The ifs function allows you to use multiple if statements in order to determine if a certain condition is true or false and then give you back a value. And so if you look in this case, I've got a bunch of students here. And um, we have the student's uh, name here, last name. And we have their student's first name. And then we've got a score that they've gotten on something. And then we want it to actually find us the, the actual grade. So what we can do here is use a formula. And you can see what I did was if h5 is bigger than or equal to 93, then give me the value in C3 right there. If it's not bigger than 93, check to see if it's bigger than 91. And that's what this formula says here. If h5 is bigger than or equal to 91, then give me the value in C4, which is A minus. If it's not bigger than 91, check to see if it's bigger than 93, 90, right here. And if it is, then give me back the value in C5. And you'll notice that in some of these I used an absolute cell reference, um, whereas in others I didn't. I should have an absolute cell reference in every single one of these because I want to copy this formula down. Okay, so make sure that you use an absolute cell reference for what is right there. Um, if uh, and then I have it checked to see if it's bigger than if it's not bigger than 90. Check if it's bigger than 60 equal to 60. If it is, give me pass. And if it's not bigger than 60, then that means it has to be smaller than 60. So, um, and I just put if h5 is less than 60, then give me what the value in c7, which is fail. So I take that formula, and then I copy it down, and then that gives me whether anyone passed or failed. It's an alternative to the vlookup function in this case. Um, but it uses a series of sequential if statements. It looks complicated, but if you think of it in just in these little sections of two parameters at a time strung together, then it makes it easier to understand your formula when you look at it. And that's how this works.